introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Taylor Middleton. Welcome to this awesome event we've got going on through Azusa Pacific University to hear a little bit about our nursing program. I'm gonna give us a few minutes. I see our participant numbers climbing um, and I wanna give people a second to join. Uh, welcome everybody, welcome. My name is Taylor Middleton. I'm one of the admissions representatives here at APU. Um, like I mentioned just a second ago, I'm gonna give us another minute, let people continue to trickle in. Um, we've got a good number of you guys. If you've already come into this event, knowing a question you wanna ask, feel free to utilize the Q&A box at the bottom. That's something we're gonna be utilizing throughout this whole event. And I'm gonna be able to use those questions to direct to some of our nursing staff and faculty to get those questions answered for you. So if you've got your pen and paper already written up, make sure to transfer those over into the Q&A box um, as the event goes on. And I'll make sure to remind you guys all about that. But I think we are where we are expecting to be. We kind of have an increase in participants. So I'm going to have Barbara and Catherine turn on their cameras and I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Taylor Middleton. As I said earlier, I'm one of the admissions representatives at APU. I serve the entire Bay Area as well as Glendale and Pasadena um, as the admissions representative for those areas. And I'm so excited to be here with some of our nursing faculty and staff to get to bring this nursing academic connect to you guys. So I'd love to have each of you introduce yourself. Maybe we can start um, with you, Catherine, and then go over to Barbara. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining this exciting um, hour of information. I am uh, Professor Heinlein, and I've been with the School of Nursing since 2001. My role is in the traditional undergrad program. I'm a nurse and a dietitian, and I teach the nutrition and therapeutics, health assessment, and a host of other courses. Um, this is the best profession you could choose. Um, I love nursing. Uh, I'm around uh, to answer any questions, and I look forward to meeting you individually in the future. Awesome, thank you. And next, I'm Barbara Wiltsey, and I am the uh, program coordinator for the traditional undergraduate nursing program. And that is uh, for you students that are uh, coming in right directly from high school. The program is what they call a direct entry, meaning that you will know that whether or not you are accepted into the program um, before you actually come on campus. So we're pretty excited about the way that we do that. And uh, we'll be sharing with you a lot about what you can expect and how to the, how the admission process works. So thanks welcome. so much. Awesome. So Barbara is going to do an awesome presentation for us for the next few minutes. While she's doing that presentation, ask questions in the Q&A, and we're going to have a separate time at the end to go through those. So when the questions come to your mind, drop them in the Q&A. I see some of you are already starting to do that. Uh, and without further ado, Barbara, go ahead and uh, take it away. We'll share the screen and get started. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I, this PowerPoint is going to let us give us uh, some insight into how the uh, process works. And um, these are actually a group of our students that have graduated a while back and uh, they are immortalized on this picture. Anyway, so the next screen shows us the early action deadline. You probably know that from reading the website that the there are a couple of deadlines for admission. Nursing requires that you actually apply by the early action. So keep that date on, on your calendar to make sure that you supply all of the items that are necessary. Uh, and let me go to the next screen and we'll show you the different requirements that you're going to see. When you apply as a nursing major, the, there will be a link that will allow you to upload some of the extra items that nursing requires. So we don't have a separate application, 
We do have some extra requirements, however. Nursing will require your uh, a personal statement or what we might call a, um, goodness me, it's a, um, a professional goals essay. And it's basically a single page just letting us know what has inspired you to uh, be a nurse, to be in nursing school. And it is uh, something that you can think about who, who it was that maybe encouraged you to do nursing and that kind of thing. Um, and what your goals are. The other item will be a uh, resume of sorts. Uh, so that's going to be something that you're going to uh, include both your paid and volunteer work over the last few years in high school. And uh, then there will be a, an extra reference for nursing. So the next slide is going to give us a little more information about that, I think. Okay, this is the actual slide that I meant to, to talk about with that. So that actually, uh, the reference will be from your su uh, supervisor or an employer. It doesn't have to be in the healthcare industry. We know a lot of you won't be able to have a, a volunteer position in a hospital or um, healthcare uh, place simply because uh, of sometimes it's their age. Sometimes they require you to be 18 and they're just because of COVID, they're not necessarily taking volunteers. So don't worry about that. Um, the resume, um, however, that can be something also that's not necessarily part of the healthcare industry. We just want to see what has kept you busy. And if you'll remember that nursing, it's really being a servant, isn't it? So there's a lot of different types of jobs and volunteer jobs that you can do that whether even if they aren't directly related to healthcare, there's a lot of serving that goes along with that and um, time management and uh, working um, to, to just, th that, that would tell us a little bit more about whether or not you'd be a good uh, fit for the nursing program. And then I already mentioned the essay. So the next slide will give us a little bit of information about the SATs. Um, the Typical, honestly, the average SAT for our applicants has been about a 4.0, give or take. The minimum is a 3.5. We know that uh, we are not requiring SAT or ACT scores. If you are able to get that done, uh, and especially if you need it for, uh, to, to cover your math requirement, that can be really helpful for you to take that when, when you have an opportunity this year. So you'll see those averages. Um, again, since they're not required, we're not, I, I don't wanna dwell on that too much, but you can let us know if that's something that you're gonna be doing and you can certainly submit those scores. Otherwise the math, uh, you'll, if you can take a pre-calculus course uh, at your high school and there's an A minus for a pre-calculus course or a B plus or a B for, for the calculus is what's needed for your math uh, requirement. We also require a high school biology and chemistry with a B or better in order to take the science courses at APU. So the next slide will um, just give you some other options. Not everybody that applies to the School of Nursing will get to get in, get accepted into the program. Uh, we wish we could accept everyone, but we just don't have the space. We are able to select about 100 students for our program and, and you, those of you that are applying for fall of 2022. But their other options are our transfer programs, uh, which you can work toward at APU or even at another, at another college. So those are things you could talk with your admissions counselor about if something, if it doesn't work out for you to actually be selected into our traditional undergraduate program. So the next slide should uh, give us some information about the hospitals. You'll notice that our hospitals are well known. If you're in the Southern California area, these are very familiar to you. The uh, students are assigned a hospital for their clinical or a healthcare facility for their clinical every semester after they begin the program. The hospitals are selected based on their specialty. We wanna make sure that you're getting the best experience. 
So for instance, uh, we do go to City of Hope, which has is primarily a cancer care facility. Huntington Memorial focuses on pediatrics, mental health, and other health care uh, at um, CHLA, which I don't have listed here, but Children's Hospital in Los Angeles, uh, if you are, when you get it to your pediatric rotation, that would be one that you might select as well. So there's all these great hospitals that we work with, that we have contracts with, and um, they love our students. So the next slide will show us about the study away possibilities. Um, this is a, an older slide and I didn't get a chance to get that South Africa down because we aren't going to South Africa. So I'm sorry that I have that up there. Um, we wish we could give you that as an option. And uh, the other two options for China and Norway, we are working with our contacts there. And my understanding is, is that they are hoping to have those programs intact again. Um, of course, with COVID, we were unable to have our students study away, which is so disappointing. Um, for our students this last uh, year. However, we had great experiences here um, in the LA, Orange County area for uh, underserved, the underserved population there. So the, the opportunities we hope by the time you guys are in your junior year, which will be a few years from now. So we're really praying that God will open up opportunities for us. And we do have so many contacts um, with uh, other facilities that we expect will, will come through for us. So I think that's my last slide and uh, we will um, love to take any questions um, that you have about nursing and about the program and admissions, the admission process. Awesome, okay. I want to step in really quickly and share a little bit from the admissions perspective of how we handle sort of working with you with your application. So mm -hmm. as Barbara mentioned earlier, the program is a direct entry nursing program, but that does not mean that if you get accepted to the university, you're automatically accepted to the program. So when you submit that application by the 15th of November, what happens is that our admissions team looks over those, all of your details to see if you fit into those minimums that Barbara had just illustrated for you guys. So the math, the science, the GPA, that you have your resume in there, your essay, your letter of recommendation. If you're all good to go on that, we will pass you along to Barbara and we and her team, and we would evaluate and say, okay, they are able to be admitted to the university. And you would find out from us, hey, you're admitted to the university, but you would not find out that you were admitted to the nursing program for a couple of months. Barbara, could you speak in to that timeline for students about how long it would be for them to expect finding out about a decision from the nursing program? Absolutely. So we will notify you by February 1st of that, of gosh, 2022, right around the corner, right? So you guys are supplying your application as a nursing major, November 15th. The review process happens in the, in the admissions department and then they will send the um, file to nursing for review. And our, uh, our department, our team will be reviewing those uh, files very carefully and by January, we will start um, making decisions and then we will notify you uh, one way or the other, you'll know. So by February 1st is that deadline, is that deadline for us to send to you. Great, <laughs> that's super helpful because I find that students get really anxious after submitting it in November. So just know you submit it and you just gotta let it go hang for a there. little bit there, right. hang in there, exactly. Um, one quick thing I would love for you to talk about a little bit more and maybe um, Professor Heinlein, you would be able to speak into this as well. I'm not sure, but I know as for me, I studied religion. So I graduated from Baylor University and I know about Baylor's nursing program and some of the UC's and CSU's nursing programs. And then I learned a lot about, a lot more about nursing when I started here. And I learned that the fact that we have a direct entry nursing program is quite an anomaly. Mm -hmm. So I know I've a lot of students who express interest in the nursing program could also look at a program like 
SDSU. So would you be able to talk about the difference between an SDSU where it's not gonna be a direct entry nursing program and APU that is gonna be a direct entry nursing program and what the value, uh, what the value piece is gonna be for, for students that are looking for that? So maybe I could respond to the best of my knowledge. Um, so what happens with the direct entry program in my experience is that you actually begin your clinicals early on. So um, that's the advantage. You're, you're exposed to patient care first semester, pretty much that you're in the nursing program. So that's the advantage. You, you get the experience um, where there's no, you know, other programs you might have the courses, the didactic lecture, um, and then you go to your uh, nursing uh, skills on the floors. We, we kind of do that in complement. Um, and I think um, you all being able to get um, that exposure to patient care early on is actually to the best of your advantage. My um, understanding and my experience. Awesome, thanks for that. Barbara, you have anything to weigh in on that? Yeah, that's she, uh, Dr. Heinlein's absolutely right. Uh, but the, another nice thing is that students know right away that they are admitted. Many of the different types of programs, I'm not familiar with San Diego's um, actual is that the one you mentioned, San Diego State? Yes, that's the so, one where you're going to go in your freshman <laughs> year and then you would apply after freshman year to get in to right. do it your junior and, and senior year. Yes, and we've done it that way in the past, years ago, but it, we found that it was um, very challenging uh, because so many students would actually be um, able to manage the nursing, but we just didn't have room for everyone. So you were spending money another semester trying to get in. So we felt that it was a better stewardship of students' finances and the time um, to just say, you know, you're either in or, or you're not and, and could, might want to select a different uh, choice for a major or um, perhaps there's another program. Um, the nice thing is just knowing that you're in, you don't have, you're not competing with your, your um, classmates in anatomy uh, of getting the better grade or whatever. And, uh, that is just a, a, a wonderful relief and it helps the students to be able to focus. And then you should, uh, Dr. Heinlein is right about getting into that clinical that very first semester, you just jump into what it is that you love doing. So here you are age 18, coming into the School of, of Nursing, getting some of, some of your sciences done first before you actually begin the program because we assign you a cohort that's either going to be in the spring or the fall of the following year. So it would be 2023, but in fall of 2022, you would be starting with your sciences and then you would begin your actual clinical experience in the hospital by spring of 23 or fall of 23. And so that is, you're jumping right into it. It's a hands-on, um, something that you, you love, you'll love doing. So anyway. Thank you so much for sharing about that. Yeah, in like truncated terms, just to talk a little bit about that fall and spring cohort, the way I like to explain mm -hmm. it to students is if you're admitted to the spring cohort, that means you'll start clinicals the spring of your freshman year. Mm -hmm. And if you're admitted to the fall cohort, that means you'll start clinicals the fall of your sophomore year. Right. And so you're gonna have so much more experience with different hospitals, different healthcare, branches and things like that, that you wouldn't necessarily have the opportunity to have if you were in a nursing program that began, say, your junior year or even your mm -hmm. sophomore year of college. And that's more hospitals to know, more people to know, and more opportunity for you to figure out what element of nursing do you want to be in. Um, I feel like Dr. Heinlein has gotten, when she expressed all of the things that she does for the university, I think she would end up being a great example of sort of narrowing in on where in the nursing field she really thrives and enjoys. 
for time and thus likes to speak on that. So I would love Dr. Heinlein, if you could, or Professor, Professor Heinlein, Professor Heinlein, <laughs> if you could speak in a little bit more to um, what it's like being a professor in the School of Nursing um, and sort of what, what brings you joy in that, in that role and how you're able to be there to support your students. Thanks, Taylor. Well, it's, it's interesting uh, having just spoken to my students, 51 of my students yesterday in the health assessment, which is a head to toe exam um, yesterday and how I, you know, 51 students in my classroom and I'm this, they're, they're freshmen and, and uh, I'm just excited to see, I'll see them all the way through. So I love what I do. Um, I'm a doctor of education. I, uh, finished my nurse practitioner program. So some of you may have an interest in moving forward after your undergrad studies to um, master's prepared uh, level. Um, my love is community public health. Um, I just love being out. Um, I just like walking the beat. And uh, uh, I, I haven't mentioned, I also take students to India. Um, so I'm the short-term study away program director for the India program. I'll take uh, half a dozen, sometimes eight students with me all the way, 8,000 miles away to India where we actually are on the street um, and also working with women who are coming out of prostitution, wanting to improve their health, the health personally and their, of their children. So uh, I just love um, that aspect of nursing. And I also love diabetes care and education. And so um, as a diabetes educator, um, that's who you're gonna see on the floors. And uh, it's an opportunity to educate. So that's why my doctorate is in education, um, leadership and education. But um, nutrition, pediatrics is another love of mine. Oh my gosh. Why? Because it's the mother, the child, uh, health promotion at the earliest stage and nutrition complements all of that all the way through. So that's a little tidbit about what I love to do. And um, I just, you know, I tell my students early on, by the time you're done with this program, I will love you so much. And it's absolutely true. I just love what I do. Oh, my heart is so, so, so moved by that right now. Wow. Um, I think that's a really unique part of the education here at APU is you're not just another name to your professors. You're not just another face in the classroom. You are so loved, seen, prayed for, cared for, advocated for by your professors and faculty. And I hope that you can see that through what Dr. Heinlein is sharing. Um, and one day you're going to have the extreme passion that she does, um, within the nursing field and kind of be able to hone in on that. And I love that you're going to be able to have the opportunity to explore so many of those fields through your clinicals, um, and to encounter professors like Dr. Heinlein, who are so well-versed in different areas of the nursing healthcare systems, um, to sort of find that that one professor who really links with what your interest is and kind of link up with them and, and hear from them about how, how you can become a little bit more um, successful and, amb and advantageous in that field. So I do have a couple of questions that I'm gonna send your ways. Um, and this would go um, hmm, specifically, to Dr. Heinlein, if you could talk about how you work your faith into um, being a professor here at APU, that would be awesome. You bet, this is my favorite question of all. So just so you know, um, I'm a Jesus freak. And I'll tell that right at the beginning of the class. Um, so you're gonna hear about Jesus from me. And thank God we're at a university where um, no holds barred. I'm going to talk about Jesus uh, because, you know, I wouldn't be here in, in this, at this university doing what I do if it wasn't for him. Um, 
every opportunity, every encounter is a time to just give your testimony and show the love of Christ. Uh, nursing is, it's, it just is the walk of faith and uh, you're tested and um, you, you, you really need to come to uh, your knees every day because uh, it's a hurting world. It's, and your patients, you know, you're gonna hurt, um, but uh, we can pray. And so integrating faith um, is just all part of it. Uh, I don't say it's an assignment, not a written assignment, Highline, is, you know, it's more discussion about the hurt and the challenge that you're having and how um, you need to hang on to Christ uh, because nothing else is gonna answer your questions that way. So there you have it. Uh, I'm a Jesus freak first and foremost, and there's not gonna be a day where I'm not gonna talk about him. I love that. Thanks so much for sharing. I think that's a really key thing. I, growing up, experienced all being in hospitals a lot for different family members. And that was so hard and so painful. And so much of what got me through that was my faith. So to be able to help your future nurses walk through what families or they themselves as the nurse that's handling that patient's case may be feeling, it's so great to know that it's not just, hey, here's the to-do list of how to feel better about this. But it's this is this is a hurting, hurting profession sometimes, but it's also a beautiful one. And I love that. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. Okay, Barbara, I've got a question coming over for you. My question for you is, doo -doo -doo -doo, what types of, we have this question from the Q&A. It's uh, what types of research opportunities exist within the School of Nursing here at AP? So Barbara, I don't know if you, you can not. Well, I, you know, research i mean there we do have a research class and so that is going to be um probably in your junior year at some uh, there's a place for that class and so but i believe and dr Heinlein can maybe speak to this too but the i know many students have actually come alongside with faculty to research specific uh areas of interest and, and some faculty, uh, faculty, you guys are constantly learning, you know, the, the faculty at our school that they, um, they go on to do different projects, um, whether it be because there are many of them are, are working at their house at other hospitals or other healthcare facilities um, to keep up the work, the understanding and the knowledge that they have. And um, they have a passion for a particular area. So they will offer opportunities. And I've known several students that have worked with professors to do research. So that I would say, and I know our nursing program very much um, supports and encourages research. So on that uh, too, you will be taking a research course as part of the curriculum. Um, there have been opportunities to apply uh, for, I, I think it's a, a scholarship opportunity where a undergrad faculty would work with one student individually on a project. Mm -hmm. um, there have been poster presentations with faculty, um, with the students. So um, we're actually really excited about that because it, it also spearheads your interest as you move into maybe a master's prepared program. Mm -hmm. um, so there are opportunities and we can talk more about that if you want to email me individually, that's okay too on that. I love also, that. I, I forgot yeah. about the research symposium. We do that annually. APU has been doing that for several years. And that is a huge event where um, other um, nurses and doc, doctor, I don't know about doctors, but just other nurse, nurses and students uh, collaborate and do research projects. So there's, there's a lot going on. <laughs> Same with uh, when we've gone study abroad. So India, yes. we had during right. one of their research sympo symposiums, Dr. Haley and I presented with our students actually oh. um, at the whole focus was global and transcultural health. So we had the opportunity mm -hmm. to um, share key learnings when we had been in India. That was in oh, 
2009. I can remember that. It was a, a big event. But uh, anyway, it's um, it's hot, and we're excited when uh, students are interested yes. in doing that with us. Yes. Awesome. Okay, I do want to mention something from just school knowledge about research. I don't know if either of you are aware of this, but APU um, has what's called an R2 classification through the Carnegie Foundation. Um, there are two different structures to it. You have R2 and you have R1. And R1 are universities that conduct an extremely high level of research. R2 universities are schools that conduct a high level of research. Between R2 and R1, only 5% of uh, schools in the nation fall into those categories. Wow. Um, and there are two Christian schools that fall into that category. Um, that's Baylor and APU. APU awesome. is an R2 classification. Um, mm -hmm. And so just to sort of put some things into perspective, for example, UC Merced, that is also an R2 institution. University of San Diego, that's an R2 institution. Mm -hmm. um, your UC Irvine, UCLA, that's gonna be an R1 but to know that the commitment to a high level of research that exists within the STEM fields at APU, including nursing, um, that is good news for you as a student because you're gonna be surrounded by groundbreaking work and by professors who don't wanna just sit stagnant knowing what they know, but are really wanting to engage in their topic of interest and bring students into that. Um, so if any of the students out there are more interested in learning more about the R2 classification, you can reach out to us or just do some simple Google searches and see some of the schools that fall into that. If research is something you're wanting, um, AP would be a great space for that. Awesome. So I am going to ask some of the questions that came through. We have a question saying, how many nursing program applicants do you usually get in total? And how many students do you accept from that? We get about anywhere from five to 600 applicants and we are able to select 100, meaning that we select a little more than 100 because there's a, an, an attrition rate, which we expect not every student will be interested in coming to APU, even though we think it would be crazy not to. But anyway, the, the, I, that's basically the, the ratio. And based off of that, how would you speak into the level of difficulty or um, the level of, say, yeah, difficulty or competitiveness there is to getting into that program. I know you shared some of the stats and things like that about where the average GPA is and things like that, but maybe you could speak a little bit into that, Barbara. Well, the we are certainly looking, first and foremost, we just see the grades. That's the first thing we just happened to see, which is easy to, to pinpoint. The other areas will be uh, students that have um, a, an, a the, their resume maybe reflects some, um, not necessarily healthcare, but an, a, an ability to do more than just school. Uh, so that's helpful. And um, I think that uh, because we don't do interviews, we don't do anything like that, but we do like to see um, where students have their, their writing, their essay, that kind of gives us a clue into their personalities and their, their, their interests and so forth. You don't want to come into nursing just for the money. I mean, I've had, I have heard students that say that. So, and it's rare, it's very rare actually, because it's the kind, I've heard it said by some faculty that it's not a job that, I mean, you do it because you love it. You do it because you're willing to change that adult sick person's diaper and the different things that they have to do and the that bathing and the hard things, the cleaning up and all of that, you're doing it as a, as a, as a, um, um, a, a gift to that person. There, sometimes there's not enough money that will cover that, but there's something in our hearts that is something I'm, I'm not a nurse, so I'm not pretending that I understand it completely, but the nursing faculty and the nursing students, I see it in their 
the way that they interact with not only one another, but the way that they get excited about going off to their clinicals and so forth. So that's the kind of thing we look for. Um, I, does that answer the question? I can also speak to that because I'm on, on the committee. Oh, that yeah, you are. Through the application. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> um, uh, there was a question actually, and I wanted to respond to that about, you know, um, someone, okay. So you mentioned the personal statement in the nursing essay, Barb. So we can look at the GPA, we can look at all that, but I'm telling you, I want to read your story, mm -hmm. why or who influenced you to become a nurse. I want to hear and see your heart, mm -hmm. um, the passion you have, being a community engagement. Yes. Clubs are important. That we can see that you're in the community. Um, grades are great, but uh, I'm looking at the heart because uh, I need to see that. Anyway, I'm just letting you know. Mm -hmm. um, Somebody also asked about the recommendation letter. Yeah, uh, your teacher that knows you really well. Yes. A teacher or a coach that knows you, mm -hmm. you the, your letters of recommendation, we want to read those uh, from people who know you. Uh, some letters that say, well, I don't know her very well. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh, this person needs to know you so we know about your character, your perseverance. Um, okay, so. That's just from me, since I sit on a committee reading these things. Stuff. So the, the, the letters of reference, um, it, what we have always said, a teacher is great, but it's, it, it's good if you've been like a TA or something for that teacher, or maybe that teacher has supervised something that you've done as a volunteer, uh, or, or even in the classroom or in the community or whatever. But, um, and then that, that type of person who has overseen um, some of your stuff, so. Yeah, I love that. I think that's really valuable for all of you on the call to take into other schools you may be applying to. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of, for a lot of public schools, they'll have the brag sheet or whatnot that you fill out and give to your high school counselor. I think the way that I see it is if you have to tell your high school counselor why you're awesome, they probably shouldn't be writing yeah. your letter of recommendation. Um, if there are juniors on the call right now, please connect with a, with a teacher. Yes. Yeah. Please connect with a teacher, connect with someone at the school staff, mm -hmm. someone who's going to know you over the next year mm -hmm. so that you can anticipate, okay, I want to make sure this person who's writing my letter of reference knows yes. me deeply and truly um, because everything you're writing on the brag sheet for the most part, we already know because it's displayed through your grades or displayed through what you're writing um, for your resume, but it's about someone that's really gonna know your heart. And I think um, Dr. Heinlein shared absolutely perfectly that, that she just wants to know who you are deeply and if this is going to be a passion that you have. I always say, don't write in your essay, I want to be a nurse because I want to help people because I sure hope that everyone becoming a yeah. nurse wants to help people. That's yeah. kind of the point of the profession. Yeah. Um, so great insight from both of you on those different elements of the application. Um, I was one of the students asked if you could talk about any of the tutoring or study groups that exist within the nursing program. I know that this program is rigorous. I know it is stressful for students, even from week one, they're getting into it. Um, so maybe we can talk about some of that in school support and maybe the cohort support as well. Yeah, the, the one thing that our nursing students actually do uh, for the, as soon as you begin, they have what they call a code blue uh, thing. And it's uh, basically they are upperclassmen who will be who will, can serve as mentors to uh, students that are just beginning, whether you are still in your sciences or if you're actually beginning the nursing program, uh, students who have already been there, um, they are anxious to be a blessing to, um, but whether it's with encouragement or with study habits or helping you understand those kinds of things. Our tutoring um, organ, what, what's it called? The Center for S Student Action, is that what it's called? 
I forget what it's called, but uh, it's our academic success center. That's what I meant. Yeah. Academic success. <laughs> We're, we want you to be actively successful. Anyway, um, so that they have tutors for just about anything. And a number of our nursing students actually serve as tutors for their sciences. And so we're excited about that. Um, that uh, the, and it's no cost to the student. Um, it's, uh, they pay the tutors, but they don't require the student to pay any money. That's part of your, the deal, so. We just had uh, one of our, our senior students, um, Aubrey, come to my class yesterday. Oh, good. Uh, there was an interest in um, getting a tutor. And so we just had her come visit our, our class yesterday um, to let the students know of her availability and how to contact the center. So uh, yes, you, we, we definitely have um, those opportunities for you. Plus we have the skills lab days yes. open um, in the School of Nursing just for extra practice. And those, um, those are opportunities for you on a regular basis. Thanks so much for sharing about that. That was really helpful. I think to contextualize this for some students, um, it's important when you're looking at these different nursing programs to consider how many students are a part of these programs, what kind of access you're gonna have to things like the skills lab, like the tutoring lab, um, things like that here at APU. I like to say that if you are really struggling at APU and you are really struggling when it comes to academics, then you probably haven't gone to the Academic Success Center on campus. They have a writing center, a math tutoring center, a science tutoring center. They have academic advisors that can work with you to help you create structure and plans to help you learn how to study better and learn how to be um, a more effective test taker. I know for me, I am a terrible multiple choice test taker, absolutely horrible. SAT and ACT were not my friends, <laughs> but I'm a great oral communicator. And so I had to learn how to look at the multiple choice tests and sort of translate that into how would I verbally say that to identify my answer. And that's something that I learned through college and through getting access to tutors and success coaches and things like that. So please know that when you're at a school that isn't ginormous, um, you're able to have a lot more access to those um, amenities and benefits on campus, which is really ideal. Okay, couple more questions. What can a student expect being in the nursing program? So Barbara, when we've got an in, a potential applicant who let's say has been admitted to the nursing program, you're talking to them in March and they're saying, Barbara, I have offers from four different nursing programs and I wanna know what makes APU's nursing program unique and what is a life of being an APU nursing student gonna look like for me? Um, how would you sort of angle that to that student? Well, um, I think that the first of all, the direct entry uh, piece is a really important one. If you're selected uh, at, for the nursing program at APU, then uh, you are quite, um, it's an honor. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and students work hard for it, and uh, we understand that. So our program, I know uh, the faculty and staff, and you mentioned that, Taylor, that the faculty are, are stellar. They're just, they care deeply. They are um, committed to your success. Uh, they will give you their cell phone. We'll, you know, they'll, you'll go to coffee. You'll, you know, we have activities that help you to connect with uh, nursing students from day one. And um, we have, um, there's just a lot of uh, focus on your success. The science department also, we work hand in hand with them. They are just as uh, awesome and committed. They want to make sure that you have a clear understanding of, of the sciences that are necessary for nursing. The hospitals that we contract out with, I mentioned that uh, the hospitals really love having our students there. 
they, um, many of our students actually get jobs at the hospitals where they have been um, um, doing their clinical. It's basically an internship every semester that you're in a hospital, you're getting a hundred and some hours for many of your clinicals, for many of your focuses. And that's where you're gonna learn what you love is during one of those very um, uh, hands-on clinicals. The students also have the opportunity to do sim labs, which are very high tech um, and uh, a lot of virtual learning experiences, uh, which are also the I, I high tech and, and very informative and um, our students have really thrived in that. So, you know, the hospitals that we have an opportunity to go to, I think is number is a big deal. The, um, the pre, what happens is, is that the students are in their larger lecture and then they break up into groups of clinical groups, which we assign. And then those clinical groups will go to the hospital location. And so you'll carpool with this group of nine or 10 students and uh, then you'll go to the hospital, whether it's Cedars in LA or Foothill Presbyterian in Glendora or CHLA or Kaiser, and you'll have your time with your clinical instructor, and then you will be assigned a preceptor. So you have so much connection with not only nursing instructors, but also nurses who, and many of them are, are, are were our students, which is really awesome when the preceptors were our students. So you'll uh, be going with them on their shift. And that's, that's, and you'll learn, and especially as somebody, if you're not so timid, you can jump in, you can ask questions, you can ask to do certain things. And in doing so, that's how you learn. So anyway, I hope I answered that. Okay, from, and I think, Catherine, you have some things. Yeah. Um, I like that you mentioned a lot in the clinical groups, you know, uh, mm -hmm. we also take, I, I was clinical instructor for Presbyterian Intercommunity in Whittier mm -hmm. and had 12 students, you know, I would have the spring semesters. Yes. Anyway, you get to know us, that's really tight knit, you know, uh, pre and post conference and all that, it's, it's awesome. The other thing I wanted to mention, what makes us maybe a little different than others, um, and I'm just speaking, um, for myself, perhaps, um, you know, the fact that we're at a Christian university yes. and I can speak um, to the students about Christ. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is this cohort model, you know, right away in the very beginning, you know, we need each other. Mm -hmm. And I feel I see more support with the students um, at this university and the uh, in terms of, you know, I'm going to say, you know, there's going to be challenges, there's going to be celebrations, but uh, I just see the close knit community here, um, comparatively, uh, a, a university I went to where I, I just, I didn't feel that. I just didn't feel that. So, uh, um, yeah, I'll speak to that. It's unique. It's awesome. And um, it, you just feel supportive and you get to know your faculty. Uh, hopefully you're getting to know me already a little bit <laughs> I feel like I'm already ready to be best friends with you <laughs> <laughs> okay last question I'm going to send out there to you which is for each of you to answer what is one piece of advice that you would offer to students that are in this application process so your one golden wisdom nugget for students that are applying You go first. Okay. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, this reverent place. You know, when I come to uh, the feet of Jesus, I need to revere him. So I'm just going to put it like that. It's almost like when I'm uh, building my application, I just got to center and focus. Lord, this is what I want to do. This is what you've called me to do. This is what I want to do. I, I want this. I want this. I know you've called me to this. And pray about it. It's almost like I got the Bible here. I've got my application here. They're two. They're, they're, they're one. 
they become one. So that would be my advice to you. That's good. I, I think that's the first and foremost thing I'd agree with that. Um, I, I think that knowing that nursing is what your goal is, um, I, I think that by, by knowing that, that you spend time now, which mo most of the students already have been doing great study habits and time management and all of that, but trying to find a place where you can volunteer or if you haven't already, uh, where you can volunteer or work in a healthcare facility. Um, that seems to be such a, uh, a, a wonderful tool to help you decide if indeed nursing is your first and foremost goal. Um, the other thing is um, that it helps you be less timid. I mentioned earlier going into the clinical settings and being willing to step out a bit of your comfort zone and say, hey, can I try this? So that will help with that. But the, and the other thing is to remember to apply as a nursing major, even if you're not sure. So let's say you, you do uh, put your application in November 15th, early action. You apply as a nursing major, but you think, you know, I might like to be a teacher or I might like to whatever, uh, but, I, but you can't change your major to nursing once that whole process has begun. You can change your major to liberal studies or to allied health or something else, but changing your major to nursing is, you know, like an act of Congress. <laughs> so anyway, um, so those would be the, the things I would uh, encourage. And uh, prayer, I, I think prayer is number one. Yeah. It's really number one, honestly. I think that's so key and so good. I remember when I was a senior many moons ago in high school, and I was so concerned with, I think this is just naturally my personality. I was so concerned with, am um, I going to be the person that X school wants me to be? And I think that now I'm in this role, I realized it had it all wrong. It's not about making sure I'm the person that the nursing program wants. It's about being authentically who I am and who God has created me to be and letting that shine brightly um, through my application so that when Dr. Heinlein or um, Barbara are looking at those applications, they see, wow, I truly know who Taylor is. And she's not, I mean, if you guys are trying to play them, they're gonna see right through it. So be authentically you. And when you get to be authentically you, it really, I think, takes the pressure off and the stress off of, I need to be this perfect person because they're not looking for someone that's perfect. They're looking for someone that is genuinely gonna be a good fit for the program. Um, so just trust in that. That being said, I wanna share one quick thing and sort of have maybe an insight from, Dr. Heinlein and um, Barbara on this, but I had the opportunity to go into the nursing building earlier last month. And I was walking one of my students around showing her where her class was. And one of the craziest things, if people on this call have not had the opportunity to go into the nursing building, it is really cool because as you walk <laughs> and weave the halls to mm -hmm. find your classes, you don't see normal walls. No, the walls are covered with class photographs from all of the graduating nursing classes at EPU. I'm talking graduating nursing classes back to like when scrubs weren't a thing. <laughs> and that's all throughout the walls. And as somebody that studied history and is studying to become a history teacher one day, I find so much power knowing that somebody before you has done what you're striving to do. Um, and I know both of you have been a part of the School of Nursing for quite some time. Um, most for, I believe for both of you longer than most of these students on this call have been alive. <laughs> and so just sort of getting into speak just briefly into the, the power um, in being a part of a, a school of nursing that has existed for so many years. Um, we just have about two minutes left. So maybe you could just each share a brief thought into part of the legacy that some of these students may be called into. Okay. 
Thanks, Taylor, for mentioning the Hall Hall of Fame. Hall, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I guess for me, looking at those photographs, um, cohorts, if you will, uh, some as early as the 70s. I'm thinking of Julie Pastai right now, and I'm thinking, like, what was I doing? What was I doing when when she was in school? Mm -hmm. What was so? It's kind of like it's like a history class, Taylor. Mm -hmm. Um, so back to that, um, the legacy, you know, you're in a school of nursing, a university with a, a legacy. Um, you are my students, then you become my nurse. That's crazy. Um, that's awesome. I always say one of these days you're going to be my nurse mm -hmm. and I look forward to that interaction. That's all I want to say. Well, yeah, the, they've celebrated, gosh, 45 years, I think by now, maybe closer to 50 even, of, of nursing graduates. And uh, it's, it's inspiring because the, the, um, it, our nursing school is dedicated to getting better. They're committed to learning new things. How can we do it better? How can we support our students? Uh, how can our faculty, and each faculty comes with their unique personalities and, and awesome backgrounds that um, can speak uh, to the students in a way that, that will inspire them. So uh, I think that that is where, and the fact that our faculty, so many of them have been, uh, Catherine's been here a long time, but also others have been there for, you know, 10, 15 years uh, teaching. And that speaks to their love for not only students and teaching, but also for Azusa Pacific, which offers um, such a great, um, so many great tools to um, really not only thrive in nursing, but also in, in other areas, so. I love that. The timeline's a graduate of the undergrad and the master's oh, yes. at Azusa Pacific University. Yeah. Wow, oh, that speaks volumes. That's awesome. 1,000%. <laughs> Thank you both so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I'm quickly going to have um, our information be put into the chat for students. So students, um, there's going to be a link to visit campus, a link to apply, and then our email address. So if you have questions, direct those emails to us and we'll let you know if that's more of a school of nursing question or an admissions related question. And lastly, I just wanna say if what Barbara and Catherine were talking about tonight, that idea of being a part of a legacy is something with resonate that resonates with you. APU, we strive to be a community that creates a legacy of difference makers. And if you want to be a part of that legacy and you want to be a difference maker in the world, consider applying, consider learning more and more about our school and our nursing program. And I'm sure I can, I can speak for Barbara and Catherine when we say we're so looking forward to taking a look at your application. So thank, thank you guys you. so much. Thanks and, for inviting um, us. Of we course.